thank, thank you very much for inviting me to respond to these three very interesting and challenging papers. And um, I hope, I just hope I, I managed to do justice to them. And I, I hope also I, I managed to read my notes. So I'm not as organized as Sabbath, and uh, I scribbled notes while I was uh, listening to the papers, although I had, read, I had of course, read, read them before. So we had a session formed by what I'm kind of interpreting uh, as uh, uh, free papers looking at um, very distinct forms or positions uh, looking at abstraction. And uh, it, it, this not, might not seem so kind of evident, but I'll, I'll kind of argue my case as we go through. Uh, the first one, Irene, um, looked at Mira Shendel's use of language as a practice that uh, one could uh, say abstracted language itself. Um, abstraction here understood uh, at a kind of more philosophical level, the, the act of abstracting or kind of drawing away from, from the object. Um, the second paper, Sarah's uh, investigation of the various and diverse kind of what I'm calling flirtations with uh, abstract aesthetics uh, that occurred in Brazil prior to the kind of canonized version, uh, the art historical version, uh, that places um, abstraction arriving uh, with the uh, first São Paulo Biennial. And, and uh, the third and, and last paper, uh, Andreas, uh, who investigated um, how uh, two examples of, of photographers in Brazil in the mid 20th century. The 1950s, Joffi, or José Ojecita Filho, and, and Geraldo de Barros uh, arrived at uh, a form of abstraction uh, within photographer that uh, not only affirmed the status of uh, the medium uh, of photography vis-à-vis uh, -vis more traditional um, supports, um, but also found, um, or as an, an, or Andreas found, finds uh, uh, parallels with uh, contemporaneous uh, practices, uh, uh, for example, in Germany, uh, uh, as uh, the example of Otto uh, Stein, Stein, Steiner. Okay. okay. So, uh, I mean, and there, there are also links within these papers, mainly because of the periods, but uh, in, in, in some of the themes, with, um, with the, the previous session, uh, particularly with um, uh, Lena's paper on, on the art of the mentally ill, which uh, uh, Andreas, I think, I think you referred to, no? Uh, with Gerald de Barros, uh, yes. And, and, and the kind of hovering in the background in, during this whole period is the figure of uh, Mario Pedrosa, who is kind of a very significant figure, but, but um, he kind of appears uh, as a kind of a background figure, but perhaps it's kind of important to emphasize how significant this, this art critic uh, was during the whole kind of uh, transition from the 1930s to the 1950s and 60s in terms of the discourse uh, uh, in, within uh, experimental, uh, abstract, uh, or, or even the work with the, the mentally ill, uh, I can say. Um, Yes, so perhaps maybe I, I'll, I'll start with, um, and I, I might have mentioned this yesterday, uh, but um, I'll start with um, just kind of bringing out one example, a brief example of how uh, Mari Pedraza became such a significant character with, in articulating abstraction and, and kind of the arts of, of uh, kind of so-called outsiders. So when, when the whole debate um, around the first São Paulo Biennial uh, against the, 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 whether the ab abstractionists and the figurative uh, kind of traditional modern, mo modernist uh, in Brazil um, kind of were reacting against uh, figures like um, Gica Balcanti who were kind of accusing um, the, the, the kind of the, the Biennial showing abstract art as a kind of a form of um, kind of submission to the American imperialist and capitalist um, Mario Pedrosa uh, kind of quickly uh, went to affirm that uh, these were words uh, from uh, parrot Stanilist scribes who mimicked um, Kremlin bureaucrats. So it's kind of very, very um, um, accusational. But I'll 
I, I realise that uh, we are moving on in time, so I'll, I'll try to raise a few questions for individual papers. Um, with, uh, in, in order of appearance, so the starting with Irene on Mira Schendel. Um, uh, I, 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 I kind of, it, it's almost like a, a confessional paper in a sense. It's kind of, uh, it, it, it was a paper that uh, announced a particular um, interest for a, a specific. Uh, moment or, 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 or aspect of uh, someone's work. So, so in a sense, uh, it's it's um, it's forgivable, forgivable that that the um, the kind of early career is kind of was kind of introduced, but very quickly kind of skipped over. Such as uh, Mira Shendo's uh, the fact that Mira Shendo uh, participated in the first São Paulo Biennial, uh, which seems kind of an incredible. Uh, Thing to have done, uh, but it's, it was kind of reminded that the, the first biennial was a biennial where um, it offered open submissions, so so artists from around Brazil could submit works, uh, and, and um, because there were um, relatively few, I imagine, artists working in the kind of a modern modern um, aesthetics. Um, it, it, she, one of her, her works, one or more, perhaps I can't remember. Was, was accepted. So this kind of also establishes a, a, a link with São Paulo. Uh, and I'm not sure exactly when uh, or, or how or will, if it was because of that first participation in São Paulo Biennium that she establishes a link with the, the concretist uh, poets, the, the Campos brothers or not. But it kind of, it, it's a very significant um, thing to have, have uh, had the good fortune to have uh, been selected uh, in that in that first um, uh, uh, Biennale São Paulo. So, so then you, you moved very quickly to um, your interest in, in her use of of, um, of, of, of words uh, and language, etc. Through the example of uh, Luis Perez Oroma's um, exhibition, the Tangled Alphabet, which uh, I've heard that uh, has a nickname. Could it, uh, which isn't so um, uh, alphabeti spaghetti. <laughs> but, uh, from people that aren't very nice, but uh, but uh, also as a, as a kind of um, an interesting critique of the exhibition, uh, which I, I think the paper could have gone into if, if it had a bit more time, perhaps. That. Um, you mentioned seeing the exhibition in, in, in Madrid, but uh, it's an exhibition that was developed by MoMA, and, and that's quite a significant fact. And uh, I think people who were kind of dismissing it by calling it alphabetic spaghetti uh, uh, were kind of, in a sense, criticizing the fact that perhaps uh, this combination of these two very, very different artists through, a, through this kind of uh, very formalist um, um, apparatus, maybe if we can call it that, the, 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 use, the common use of language, um, is a kind of a product of the fact that MoMA at that point didn't have the courage to show two individual uh, exhibitions. Something that they've kind of now uh, finally kind of done with, with Lydia Clark. So there is a kind of uh, an institutional critique within the that kind of combination, um, perhaps, it, I think it was one of Luis Perez's first exhibitions that shows um, the curator still a bit kind of uh, trying or, or, or pushing his boundaries uh, at that stage. So, um, so you, you concentrate on language uh, in Shendo and, um, and, and, and you establish a connection uh, or a parallel with um, um, the, the concrete and neo-concrete poet, poets, and it, in a sense, it's, these are kind of. Um, and, and I think you, in the end, you mention um, intermedia. I can't remember the term. Is it, is it transmedia? Okay. So, in a sense, these are kind of a different movements in transmedia. One kind of going from art to language, the other one from language to 
towards the object of, of art, um, and, and and perhaps they kind of perhaps they don't meet in the middle, but uh, they they kind of approach each other. Um, so so um, and, and and here in this sense you you discuss in, in quite uh, um, quite extensively the. Um, the kind of the, the, the use of language as a kind of a visual poetry, uh, visual philosophy, perhaps um, the kind of the temporal nature of, 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 of that that language is imposed, and, and, and the kind of um, the slow the, the kind of disintegration of language into a kind of what I'm calling a kind of abstract use of language. My question, in terms of the structure, and until here it's fine. But is that you kind of go along this line and then suddenly you retreat. So you, you discuss these parallels, these equivalents, and then you affirm quite strongly that um, she then arrives at the Droginhas and the Trinzinhas, and these are her most radical works, uh, a kind of with a total absence of language. And, 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 uh, kind of, so, so I wondered, kind of, I wondered whether you were kind of either establishing a, a connection with uh, Fahira Goulart, who does a kind of similar move in poetry. Uh, kind of is, he reaches the kind of the, the disintegration of language and then has to retreat again. Um, or whether perhaps you were, you were kind of focusing on language and that was kind of holding you back into looking at this kind of radicality which is a kind of going beyond language and, and kind of leaping into the void, I think you, you kind of use that kind of... Um, so that, that was um, my main question. So, and, and I'd like to finish my comments on your paper just with um, kind of three important kind of uh, words, um, well, two words and a sentence uh, that, that you use, and, and which I, I, I will... If I'm, if I read my notes correctly, I'll, I'll return to it, which uh, the first one is the transmedial. Do you mean transmedial, not transmedia? Transmedial. Um, the second is the uh, the political uh, the political art, which you talked about in terms of uh, Leon Ferrari, uh, and, and that is a kind of a problematic issue that, that kind of comes back in in, in, in other instances, and. Um, and the third, which is a sentence, is uh, things that words cannot say. So, so these are kind of three kind of uh, things that I, I took out from your paper that, that kind of I'm going to try to use to bridge with the other papers. Okay. So the second paper was um, Sarah Popple, and uh, talking about uh, the kind of interwars, I guess, uh, the 1930s and 40s um, arts in Brazil and its relation to European abstraction. Um, she began her paper with stating uh, that she had previously worked with uh, Nisida Silveira, which seems almost like a casual passing by comment, but has quite a kind of a strong uh, significance within the theme of, 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 um, of today's paper, because uh, the, the work of artist um, um, Almir Mavinier uh, even Serp uh, and um, Palatnik with, with critic Mario Andrade again, uh, with the, the, the patients in the um, Nisida Silveira, uh, psych uh, the, the psychiatric unit that Nisida Silveira used to run, um, is kind of also considered as an alternative or, or previous kind of a point of origin uh, of abstraction uh, in, in Brazil, like a point of an alternative origin. Uh, than the kind of canonical view of, of, of abstraction being imported with Max Bill um, and, and the kind of constructivist uh, tendencies during the first São Paulo Biennial. So this is significant, and the paper kind of expands on that, saying that uh, neither this can be neither Nisi da Silveira and the workshops can be kind of solely attributed as an origin itself. So, so the, the I think I, I read this paper. Uh, as a kind of a, a, a questioning of origins within art history, so that you can't affirm 
that there is a kind of single origins for whatever you're, you're talking about. But uh, as Sildur Berelius, I think, once told me, is uh, as a kind of an anecdote that his father used to tell him. It's like uh, the first man was already a crowd. So there's kind of never, when, when this kind of, um, when we're kind of studying it, it's, it's a good thing to, to remember, to kind of be aware of origins. Um, so, okay, so again, we, we kind of, I'm, I'm going to try not to repeat myself, but there, there's the, um, the established view that is presented that, that uh, Brazilian modernism didn't um, tend towards abstraction, that it, it was a kind of a, um, a nationalist, kind of figurative uh, modernism, that, that the modernism was a kind of a not, not uh, truly um, taken to, to its kind of logical conclusion. But uh, the, so the, the, the paper questions very much this, and, and, and I, I thought that that is a very kind of positive approach. Um, in terms of questioning the, this, this kind of um, what today is a kind of a, a very canonical way of understanding modernism, a very kind of uh, I would say almost North American kind of uh, post uh, MoMA and the kind of the, or the kind of the discourses of um, from from of, 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 abstract, of, of modernism as this kind of uniform linear line. Uh, towards abstraction, kind of culminating in abstract expressionism, Greenberg, etc. So when, when we're talking about um, uh, modernism outside of, uh, kind of North American and European, uh, this kind of uh, projection begins to, to um, appear problematic. And, and I would argue that it, it, it is problematic in itself uh, already. Um, I thought that... Um, at times, and I don't know if you referred to this in the, I, I couldn't, I don't remember seeing your footnotes, but uh, your paper reminded me of an article, which I can't remember the title now, but by Arasi Jamarao, uh, Arasi Jamarao, who um, tries to trace instances of abstraction within the textiles, within the kind of applied arts, and, and um, uh, to prove that. Uh, Abstraction was present within within um, modernism, and, and I, I don't know if you refer to this or if it's a kind of coincidence. But the the fact is that I find this argument also problematic because it kind of it's is submissive to this idea that abstraction is essential, is a kind of a, a, a central key towards uh, the true character of, of modernism, which I disagree, and, and um, I'll, I'll I'll try to. Explain why I think I was talking about this last night. But, um, so, you showed uh, a painting by Picasso uh, with the um, the two women running along the beach of 1922, and that painting says a lot about uh, the, the, what modernism had become after the First World War. And, and uh, it was that modernism of the 20s from Paris that, that the Brazilians absorbed. Um, it was a modernism uh, which tried to filter itself out um, any kind of Germanic uh, references, so uh, expressionism and so on. So, and um, it kind of rejected abstraction in favor of a kind of a, a stylized uh, object type kind of. Uh, a figuration, um, uh, a modernism that was very nationalist in its uh, approach. And, and, and this was the, the modernism that the Brazilians, um, when they went to France, France uh, uh, were confronted with. So it was a modernism that, that for which abstraction was never kind of uh, the aim or the target. So it was a modernism that, that uh, asserted um, the specific cultural characteristics of the place at the same time as um, as being fascinated by the other as well so there's a kind of a duality in it it's kind of it asserts the self but in order to assert the self it needs to project 
the other. It needs to kind of have the other. So, so that, that that's where the kind of the, the cubist interest in the primitive and black and African arts, etc., kind of is kind of filtered through this uh, this kind of uh, chauvinistic kind of new hapella uh, lauder type of, uh, of of modernism, and that that's. The kind of the, the the type of modernism that's developed around the circle of, of um, kind of teachers that artists like Tassila um, uh, come come across in Paris um, through Ganon Leger, uh, uh, André Lot, and and, um, and 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 who are following the writings of, of Le Corbusier and and, and uh, aux enfants, the, the, the theories of purism. And that is a kind of a, the genealogy that um, that has a huge influence not only in, in painting through through the Tassila, uh, which which kind of you you established uh, these these kind of parallels, through Tassila or uh, Monte de Dohebo, um, as well. But that influence is um, architecture. So the kind of modernist architecture through the, the the image of the garden uh, the. Uh, Palazzo Capanema, uh, the Boulemax uh, design, is, is almost like a purist painting by uh, Corbusier. It's, it's, a, it's a kind of a purist abstraction. But uh, I, I, f- I believe it, it kind of, more than kind of um, expressing abs- abstract tendencies, it expresses uh, more kind of a purist sensibility. So, um, so there is a kind of um, a logical development from Brazilian modernism in the 20s and Brazilian architecture in the 50s and 60s. Um, something that uh, the, the um, constructivist avant-garde of the post-war uh, don't have. So there is a kind of... The, what, what happens in the sense of abstraction are not kind of um, little examples that then develop into a kind of main strand after the war, but uh, different um, types or di- different types of Genealogy or presence of abstractions in different genealogies within uh, uh, modernism. So I, I probably am running out of time. So I'll move on quickly. To this. Um, I, 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 I'm, I'm a big fan of um, of Joffe and José Tigafilio and, and um, <coughs> incredible photographs. And uh, I, I, I'm. J- I, Amazed that there's so little known outside the kind of immediate circle. So, so uh, congratulations and, and, uh, on on um, working on this and, and establishing uh, a parallel uh, with um, contemporaneous uh, experiment experimentations in, in photography uh, in, in in Germany. Um, I, I quite like the fact that you kind of affirmed. The, the São Paulo Baeno as the, this kind of great divider of waters, the, the kind of before and after, kind of mentioning Max Bill, etc. So it was nice to have a kind of uh, the, the more canonical, kind of uh, uh, consensual view, historical view, kind of uh, affirmed, only only to then to speak about um, a, a, a very parallel uh, development, which was that of photography, and I. I in terms of um, your paper, I, I kind of wished that you had perhaps established more of a connection with, between the uh, the Photocine Club and, and uh, other events that were happening, such as um, the, 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 the art school uh, or, or painting lessons that his sons used to attend at MAM with okay. Vivant Serpa. And that, that would have, because um, I think there is a kind of an aesthetic, or, or, a, or a, uh, what, what's the term that um, Ivan Lambois uses, a, a pseudomorphism uh, connection between, um, between the kind of the, the, the Frenchy aesthetics and uh, the photographs that, that uh, José Sigafilio is developing around the same time. So I'm kind of wondering if the dates match and uh, whether whether there is a kind of coherence there or whether it's a, a simple kind of coincidence that uh, 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 and in the same way um, I, I I was um, 
curious to find out whether there was any correspondence in terms... Usually I kind of complain of people um, saying, that, well, this art object travelled from there to there, so someone must have seen it. And I think uh, ideas are, are kind of they're, they're far more fluid than objects and people themselves, and they travel far um, more, more fluidly. But, uh, of course, it's harder to kind of identify how... how the trajectory of an idea or, or, or whether it was just a purely coincidental that, that the same thing happened in different places at, around the same time. So I was wondering whether uh, you had seen any kind of concrete um, connections uh, or exchanges of, of books, exhibitions between uh, uh, Otto Stein, Steinart and, um, and the Brazilians or whether they were Kind of similar experiences within the kind of the, the structure and the technique of photography, uh, giving kind of rather well different, but kind of in a, in a similar vein, uh, results. Whether it's just a coincidence or not, or not. So, um, right. yes. Um, I was also interested in, in the, this idea of subjective photography. That was uh, uh, something that the, the very much developed uh, uh, by the Germans, and whether this, 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 these theories kind of had any repercussion or, uh, in, in, in Brazil, and whether um, abstraction within photography um, could be seen in itself, and, and this is uh, to finish off, um, as a form of, of um, perhaps not transmedia it's in itself, but a kind of a rehearsal for the, the kind of the, the, a place where, where the kind of categories or disciplines like poetry, language, painting, sculpture, photography were seen to be things to, to be over, overcome, a kind of a rehearsal perhaps to the, the, what would occur during the 1960s where artists like Elio Itisica could make a three-dimensional structure and call it music.